Welcome back. Well, for days now, we've been watching a caravan of Central American migrants headed towards the southern United States border. Thousands of migrants are moving north through Mexico, despite warnings from U.S. President Trump. He's again taking to Twitter with a series of tweets. He says, Guatemala, Honduras and El Salvador are not stopping people from coming illegally to the U.S. And he threatens to cut off foreign aid. Mr. Trump also blames the Democratic Party and says that he has alerted Border Patrol of the, quote, national emergency. Well, for more on all of this, let's bring in Bill Weir. He is on the Mexico-Guatemala border, has been reporting extensively on this story. Uh, Bill, hundreds of migrants have made it to Mexico. Do we know how many have applied for asylum and how many have been accepted or how many might be accepted? Well, uh, the numbers are so hard to measure, uh, Linda. For perspective, on Friday, the, the number was around 4,000 who reached that bridge at the Mexican border, crashed the gate, were pushed back. Many of them swam, jumped off the bridge, got away across, and now are a good 50, 60 kilometers inside Mexico. And now the official numbers from the state here is it's north of 7,000 people. Uh, uh, equal distribution of men, women, and, and children in there. We're hearing from the First Lady of the Honduras that thousands have come back, but that seems really implausible because there's this is so fluid and, and so... Uh, hard to measure exactly how many are here right now, but in terms of those seeking asylum, maybe 500 a day in this state. Uh, the Mexican government says that could reach numbers in the 20s of uh, 20,000 or more. Uh, but what we are seeing is just incredible grit and determination and desperation. I met a woman actually from Guatemala hanging off that border bridge on a crude sort of rat rope ladder system as she tried to, to make her way to Mexico with her three uh, children. And this is what she told me. I want them to study, have a good future. I do this for my kids. I ask you with all my heart, wouldn't your mother do the same for you? She, uh, her name is Rosaline uh, Guillermo. Uh, she spent 24 hours on that bridge. She says, I'm an all-terrain woman. This is nothing. I'm chasing my dream. And it is still 5,000 kilometers from here uh, to the U.S. border. And so many of them just relying on the kindness of strangers. We're seeing charities hand out bread and clothing uh, to these people and yes they are aware of President Trump's tweets but most of them say we're not terrorists we're not criminals we're either seeking work or fleeing the kind of violence most people uh, cannot imagine uh, one of the organizers here uh, said he's crazy I don't know why he would say these things uh, but it seems like US politics are not playing into their equation and their decision to make this walk Linda all right, Bill Weir, on the Mexico-Guatemala border, good to have you there for us. Thanks so much. I want to go now to Jared Kushner, the president's son-in-law and a close advisor who is also a close friend with the Saudi crown prince. He's talking to Van Jones. Let's listen in. What's going on? So now every time they're there, he makes sure I bring them by the office. He has a little candy draw where he knows how to, you know, make sure they get stuff their mom won't let them have. <laughs> And, um, you know, and he, he really loves his family, and, and he gets a lot of pleasure out of that. You guys are so different. I mean, when, when you talk about the trade stuff, I, I like it better. Um, <laughs> <laughs> for, for instance. Um, so, um, but, but, but I can never be elected president. Right? <laughs> well, but, but, I mean, how do you, I mean there, there, must be, there must be times where the differences, you know, are, are, are painful or frustrating. How do you deal with that? Uh, just have open dialogue. I mean, he's uh, one other thing people don't realize that he's very receptive to uh, differing viewpoints. I mean, he's a very flexible thinker. I think he's a pragmatist, and uh, he'll have very strong opinions. Uh, but if 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 you get the opportunity to come and sit with him and make your case to him, uh, he'll definitely listen. He may agree. He may not agree. But uh, I find that he's uh, incredibly receptive to to thoughtful arguments. And you, do you do you find that you're better able to uh, make those those behind the scenes cases now as as time has gone on do you feel like you have more influence or trust or do you feel like every day you kind of have to, to to earn it and prove it or how, how, how does the relationship feel to you and its growth well i agree with a lot of the things he's pushing for so uh so i'll, I'll make the case on certain things and uh but he'll do what he wants to do and i think that that's that's what he's entitled to do he he ran on a lot of the things he's doing he was elected president on a lot of those things and uh, he feels uh, an obligation to the voters and to the american people to execute on the agenda and he's doing it because he thinks it'll make the country better and i think a lot of the things we've done have made the country better mm -hmm.
President's son-in-law and presidential advisor Jared Kushner there talking to my colleague Van Jones. We're going to continue to monitor that throughout the day. For now, I'm Linda Kincaid. That was the International Desk. Coming out, we've got World Sport with Christina McFarlane with the latest on Lewis Hamilton's quest to win a fifth Formula One title. And then I'll be back at the top of the hour with Connect the World.